Next implemented with 2008 Server, Network Access Protection or NAP addresses security risks that come from within an organization as opposed to without. While a well-configured firewall and intrusion detection system may protect an entity from outside threats, it does not protect it from internal breaches in security due to large numbers of unhealthy clients accessing the company's internal resources. Portable network devices like flash drives, cell phones, tablets, PDAs, iPads, iPods, MacBooks using airport, and PC laptops provide a large security risk within an organization's internet security that cannot be mitigated with traditional firewalls and intrusion detection. NAP has both server and client components. NAP servers must be 2008 servers or above. NAP clients can be Windows XP Service Pack 3, Vista, or Windows 7. Note, Windows XP Service Pack 3 does not have the full NAP client features that Vista and Windows 7 have. NAP is a function of the Network Policy Server, or NPS, and it controls access to network resources based on a client's identity and its compliance with security policies such as updates, firewall configuration, antivirus definitions, and IP setting. If NAP finds clients that do not comply with its policies, it can block their access to the network and attempt to automatically bring those clients into compliance. NAP makes use of these enforcement methods. Some of these are DHCP enforcement. If the NAP client is out of compliance, it forces the DHCP server to give the client an alternate configuration that limits access to network resources until the client is brought into compliance. IPSEC enforcement. This utilizes PKI-issued help certificates for clients that meet compliance. Without these certificates, clients are denied participation in IPSEC secured communication. VPN enforcement. This restricts network access to VPN clients based on their compliance with NAP security policies. A short breakdown of NAP is as follows. First, a NAP health server is set up utilizing NPS or Network Policy Server Services. Second, NAP clients connect to the network and must submit health information to a NAP enforcement point. Third, the NAP enforcement point then submits the client's health information to a NAP policy server using RADIUS. This NAP server may act as a RADIUS authentication server for the NAP client. Fourth, the NAP server evaluates the client's overall health based on its compliance with health rules and requirements. Fifth, if required conditions are met, the NAP client receives a health certificate from a certificate authority especially designated to provide certificates for NAP clients. Sixth, if the NAP client does not meet health requirements, it may optionally be placed on a network with restricted access. Let's see some NAP action! We're working with Network Access Protection or NAP and specifically how it works with DHCP today. So the first thing I want to do is go to Server Manager and I want to set up the DHCP server role. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say Add Roles, Server Roles. I'm going to select DHCP. I'm going to click Next and Next. I want to serve it out over my static IP and it should be static IP, not dynamic of course. The DHCP server, you don't want the DHCP server you know, server's IP address itself changing dynamically. And the domain here, um, <clears throat> in this case, this is actually a standalone. Um, we'll just do Battlestars. And IP version 4 address, it's fine, not doing IP version 6. Um, no win server is employed here. I do need to add and configure a scope. And so, I'll do Battlestars Clients, and for the starting IP, I'm going to do 199.207.13.210 and 199.207.13.250. That'll be my scope there. Class C, just normal Class C subnet mask, and then the, the default gateway is 199.207.13.1. And then the subnet type, I'll go with the default here. And then I want to activate the scope. <clears throat> I'm going to disable DHCP version 6. Don't need it. And DHCP server authorization, I'm going to allow, the, you know, in this case, uh, 2008 server to do that for me. Next and install. So it's just going to go through and, you know, configure the role and install the things, the dependencies and things that it needs for the dynamic host configuration protocol. 
Okay, and now our installation has succeeded. I'm going to click on close. And the next thing I want to do is configure, um, you know, NAP. With the HCP installed, we want to go back to Server Manager. And the next thing we want to do is add another role. And this time we're going to do uh, Network Policy. So Network Policy and Access Services. I'm going to check that. Next, next. And I'm going to select a Network Policy Server. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next and install. And we're done. Installation succeeded. I'm ready to configure uh, our network policy server. So we've installed DHCP and we implemented the role of network policy server. And I'm just going to open those tools up there. Here's my DHCP management console. And I'm going to go look for a network policy server. and. Uh, of course, I'd probably just throw some shortcuts on my desktop for those, but particularly of interest, I want to make sure that my DHCP server has been authorized, and there's the green arrow there, so it's been authorized. Otherwise, unauthorized wouldn't be there. And I want to make sure my scope is active, and it is, otherwise deactivate would not be there. My address pool, 210 to 250 on a Class C network, and so 40 addresses. I haven't leased any addresses yet, and then the scope name, Battlestar Space Clients. I'll need to know that. So I'm going to go over to my network policy server tool. And what I want to do is configure NAP. And notice down here, uh, network access protection or NAP is selected. And here are my different options. I can do radius for VPN servers and whatnot. But I want to configure NAP. So I click that. And then you can choose network connection method. And then in this case, I'm going to configure a DHCP server. You know, look at some of the other options, VPN, terminal services, gateway. But today, we're interested in this one, DHCP. Go with the default name. You can call it banana. Who cares? Um, radius clients you could specify by IP address you know and verify individual radius clients in a VPN or router situation but just skip that click next we're going to go to DHCP scope so I want to add the name of the scope Battlestars clients and I'll click OK and there's my scope I'm going to click next and I could add, you know, I could configure user groups and machine groups to specify, um, you know, grant or deny access to those groups based on their membership. But just, I'm going to skip that. And this way it applies to everybody. If, if you do skip that, just you know, know that it applies to everybody. I can configure a remediation server group. And, you know, this is for the clients that I want to allow NAP to try to automatically heal or to automatically bring into compliance. Be that they have old, you know, antivirus signatures or they're... IP settings or their firewall settings or something are not considered healthy or they don't meet the policies of our, our particular organization or company. So I'm, I'm going to select none there. Just next, I'm going, to, I'm going to do this with all clients. Go to the default and notice this is enable auto remediation of client computers. So that option has been selected. And here's the, you know, going with the default Windows Security Health Validator there. And notice here what I can select network access restrictions for NAP and eligible client computers. I can deny full network access to NAP and eligible client computers, allow access to a restricted network, in which case I could configure, you know, um, a separate set of gateway and subnet settings, um, even a, a, an alternate scope. And users that don't meet, you know, that, that are not in compliance with our network access uh, protection policy, then you know, we could put them on that subnet. And maybe they could have Internet access and a few other things, but they wouldn't get full access to our company's network. And that way they are isolated, and so we have some protection from them if they have viruses and worms and if they have just generally unhealthy computers that shouldn't be connecting to our network. And on the other hand, I could choose this option to allow full network access to NAP and eligible client computers. And that gives them, you know, I mean, I can still attempt auto remediation, but that would still give them access to the company's network anyway. I stick with the default if you, you know, want the full protection of, of NAP. Click Next. And I'm going with the default settings and finish. Okay, and so now NAP is configured. Now that we have NAP set up, let's look at some of the features and capabilities of NAP. So I'm going to open up Network Policy Server. And I'm going to, I'm going to go here to Network Access Protection System Health Validators. I'm going to double click on Windows Security Health Validator. Sort of our default health rule. I'm going to go ahead and click on... Notice the options here, but I'm going to click on Configure. 
And these tabs apply, you know, you could configure for Windows XP Service Pack 3 clients. Remember, you need at least Service Pack 3 for XP to support NAP. And then over here for Vista or Windows 7 clients. Just look at some of the features you can configure. You can require that a firewall be enabled, such that if that client's firewall is disabled, it would be considered not in compliance with your NAP policy. And so it would not be issued a health certificate, and then it may be restricted or denied access to the network. You could specify virus and spyware protection and that they be up to date and that automatic updating be enabled. And you could you know, also combine that with WC software update services, make sure they have the latest service pack. There's a lot of things that you could choose to implement here. Uh, you know, restrict access for clients that do not have all available security updates installed. You can kind of look at, you know, just, just a vast number of features there we could determine with NAP. And based upon whether clients meet or do not meet, you know, these policies, these rules, based on whether or not they are in compliance um, with network access protection, they'll either be allowed to access the full network or they'll be placed onto a restricted network where they, you know, can't access certain things or they may be completely denied access to the, the network. And you, you can make those decisions and, and determinations based on the rules of your organization or your company.